on the job very early in the morning, bringing you your bonya for your corn flakes and the chiseler's porridge. Now, this operation will be all yup and hoik as the horse and Jerry and Tom move around the road. Yup and hoik. It'll be a long time before you can say yup and hoik to your motor car. I hope your man won the pools or something. Now, the horse is after spying that bit of grass over on the right. And watch this manoeuvre from the left over to the right. Well, you get your tea break, don't you? So isn't the horse entitled to his grass break? Will you look at the expert way that Jerry's handling them bottles? Now, if you or I try to do that, there'll be glass smashing and milk spilling all over that road. But for these fellas, it's like a... It's like a cup of tea or a drink of milk, as you might say. Tom is doing it for more years than he cares to remember. Has a good woman left out the empties. John Hardy is one of the few remaining blacksmiths in Dublin. Will you listen to that lovely music of the cat's head hammer and the anvil beak? Oh, hold it a minute, here's a customer. Yes, it's Christy Doherty, bringing down his horse to buy him a new pair of shoes. Farriers are few and far between nowadays. Same again. The hind leg first. No need for the nose pole on this horse. Sure, he's been here before. Knows the forge well. This isn't the first new pair of boots he got. John is getting the shoe ready now, the urn in the fire to turn the metal and make the shoe. Back down onto the beak of the anvil and back up onto the base. There's the punching for the pritchel to go in later to make the holes. Do you know the sounds and the smells of a blacksmith forge have a magic all of their own. There's the old bellows getting a bit of a blow. That's the wonderful thing about a blacksmith's fire. It's never too glowy, so it won't burn the coal away too quick, and yet it never goes out. The old bellows keeps it at the right pitch. There's the clip being beaten into the shoe now with the side of the cat's head hammer. That's the secret of how the shoe is held on. See it coming up there. There's the pritchel going through now to complete the hole. Oh, I should just work of art. Is he still alive? Yeah, still alive. Well, he come in here one day and he said, have you any hoof, you Limerick man? I say, have you a dog at home? No, no, not at all, he says. So I believe the dog is very fond of it. No, he says, I nearly died a thousand deaths last night. What do you mean? He said, uh, I was in bed, I suffer from the chest. I get a bit at the hoop on the saucer, right at the side of the bed, and I inhale it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, right. There's a bit of the witch doctor about that. <laughs> when we were kids, we used to smell tar barrels for the flu or the hooping cough. Into the quencher, cool it off, quenching butt. The blacksmith's tools are kept in a special wooden box. There's the hoof paring knife, the pinchers, the raft, the cask head hammer, the coal set, the hot set, the flatteners, the fullers, the swages. Ah, oh, sure, look at And a range of tongs. And do you see them nails? Well, do you know what I saw recently? 
A fella outside the GPO making necklaces with them and selling them to the girls for a couple of pound each. There's a businessman for you. Hello, David. Good. That'll do that. That'll do. Come on. This one. This one. Come on. Come on. Now there's the clincher going into the clinching tongs to clinch off the ends of the nails. And of course the rasp down. And in a minute, a drop of oil will be put over those hoops. You know, to let that old horse know he got a new pair of boots and to let everyone see that he has a new pair of boots. Was not a quick operation. You wouldn't have tried on the left foot shoe yourself in the time that that job was done. No. There you are now. Well, that's showing. The fruit market and more Dublin workhorses. Here's a lovely job now with motor car wheels. Some of these even have a spare wheel underneath. I don't see him with one though. Ah, me jewel and darling Moor Street, where every lady vendor is a queen and Rosie is the queen of queens. Shadell Street nearly speaks for itself. No shortage of fruit today or vegetables. Apples, tomatoes, bananas, onions, cauliflowers, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, mountains of them. The only one did I have six. There's the load coming off. Select tomatoes. Will you look where your man hung his coat. And there's the right load he has. I wonder what's in them boxes. Apples are. Tomatoes or something, under the counter. There'll be plenty over the counter as well. Pyramids of fruit. Stall upon stall. You're always sure of a bargain in Moor Street. Or as Jimmy O'D used to say, go down to Moor Street and get your nose educated. Well, here's a man with no horse, but that thing's moving very fast. Six for twenty pence. Time to set pound for tomatoes. Half a dollar. 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 Half That was a quick operation. Empty. In a matter of minutes. Ah, Mike Henry's coal yard in the heart of the Liberties. And a couple of bellmen loading up and a big lorry loading up there to make the suburban deliveries. The bellmen get their name from the time the horse used to carry a bell around his neck. And of course, every time the horse threw his neck up and down, the old bell rang out. And of course, the people in their houses knew it was the coal man when they heard the bell. But some of them have no bells, and those that had no bells always shouted. And of course, we as chiselers used to run after them, and we did our shouting too. Very few bellmen in Dublin today. on Angel Street. Hey, give way to horse traffic there. That car should have stopped. Give way to horse traffic. Well, when we were kids, we used to say, what do you feed your mother on? You're going up there to a customer.
There's a fella now going to get a bucket full of it. Oh, carry too much in that. Coal is still bought in stones in Dublin. Not the weight. The scoop. A shovel and a shovel and a, a bit will nearly finish this. Bit. Another bit. Another bit. Another bit. Another bit. And another bit. And another bit. That's probably a chilli, that last lump. You know the way you just get the chilli in the milk. And there's a bucket of coal. To he's a Dublin family. For how long? A night? A weekend? Or maybe a week? Bellman's off to scoop out more stones of coal. Our black diamonds, as we used to say. What do you feed your mother on? A Dublin mule. Oh, here's a load of scrap going up on the yoke. Look at that for character. He's looking around there, he knows the load's started. And watch the ears twitching. He hears every sound in that street. Look, he, he notes something now. Oh, he saw her coming. Well, there's one woman won't be watching us tonight. Getting rid of the telly. It must be banjaxed. Talbot Place. It is, you know, it was a Friday. All the loads are coming into the scrapyard. I'd say that thing saw flush times. Here's another load. King James used to mint money coins out of this stuff up in Capel Street in 1689. But the scrap people today use it for other messes. And you look where your man's sitting. A grandstand view. There's a nice bit of brass work. And here's a couple of fellas giving the horse a rest. Onto the way bridge. A few bobs worth in that. A few jars tonight. Jemison's of Bow Street and the Smithfield Hay Market, where all the countrymen came with their hay. <gasps> you couldn't get down the street for hay and countrymen. There's John Crewer, the owner of Patterson's, the saddlers and harness makers in our King Street. And William Fitzpatrick. William was born a deaf mute, but he's a powerful pair of hands. He's making his own twine, as it was made in Dublin for the past 700 years. Now watch this, because you won't see this in a lifetime. Hooks it in through there, pulls it back to him. He wants to get the twist into it now. Coil over rubs it down off the leg to get the twist. Now, William must have made millions of miles of twine in his lifetime. And of course, you know, the man that makes his own thing has more faith in it. Now, he rubs in a bit of cobbler's wax here. That darkens the twine. It also binds the twine together. And of course, makes it waterproof. You know, the saddlers have a great tradition, dating back for centuries. 
It was in the year 1558 that the Common Council decided that the saddlers be given a special corporation of their own, a guild of their own, similar to the goldsmiths. And sure, why wouldn't they? The goldsmith might make the ring for the finger, but the saddler makes the ring for the horse's neck. Here's William now, tapping out with a special type of mallet. That was him you saw at the beginning of the picture. Stuffing wheat straw into the donkey's collar with a collar iron. Another bit is needed. No, the right amount. Not too much, not too little. Bit of a twist. And the collar iron again. Bends it over. And inserts it. Craftsmen to their fingertips. The half moon knife cuts off the surface straw. That's a special saddler's tool. The boss, John Cruitt, sewn on the leather caps. John finishes off the job. There's stitching. and a bit of trimming. The leather is kept in a bucket of water. It has to be kept in water to keep it flexible. That's the palm iron. It's used to push and pull the needle through the leather, and through the collar. See it there now? a push operation and a pull operation. That's well sewed together there. I tell you it won't come apart. Very easy. Another push and another pull. And the saddler knows that he's stitching with his own twine. That's the gauge knife cutting the leather into strips. It also cuts out the reins and the fine tin parts of the harness. The britching and parts like that. Clipped off there at the end. Bit of a fold over, chop again. Right size. Now the punch is in, punching in the holes. And this will now be inserted in the saddler's wooden voice. And the voice dates back beyond medieval times, back to the Romans. They used a similar type of wooden voice themselves. It's held between the knees. There's the buckle being sewn on. Wonderful tradition, the saddlers and harness makers. There's the final job. Oh, lucky Dunky's gonna get that around his neck. There's the, the ticking now. This is the very last act. The ticking for the inside of the collar. Look at that. For smoothness. Ticking measured on there. And horse hair is added to give it that cushiony feeling of the donkey's neck. Nice and comfortable. You know the way I like a nice collar sitting on yourself. There'll be no trouble with that one. A fine job, John. Here's Guinea, the old Sagosha, on his way down North King Street to buy oats for the horse's supper.
Well, Cullen's shop is the place. And there's the good woman, Mrs. Tannum, waiting on the customer. Here's the whiz box for the whiz outs for the supper. Right. Couple of scoops of oats. And note the scoop of bran to keep the horses' bells in order. Uh, Gin is probably thinking now that he mustn't forget the butter. That's the boy a bit of butter, he said. Thank you. Well, I'll have to get you some change. Oh, the horse is having a bit of hay. Of course, the old Smithfield Hay Market, North Kingston, there's always a bit of hay stored. No, Guinea didn't forget the butter. This is one of the last shops in Dublin that sell butter from a 56 pound block. And you know what to say, butter is the cream. Well, so too are Dublin's workhorses. Mm -hmm.